This is a Christmas round light kit. It's another DIY soldering kit, and it's something that's going to make an awesome decoration for your Christmas tree. What with the holiday season rapidly approaching, I thought now was the right time to show off this kit, so if you'd like to get your own, there'll be time for you to order one from the link in the description. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. So, as you can see, this is a shaped PCB that's designed to be hung from your Christmas tree as a decoration. And there's actually a battery holder, so the unit can be powered while it's on the tree. So that's going to be really nice. It is actually a partially surface mount kit. You'll see in the center here we have IC1 that's marked, and that's this tiny little IC on the table just here. So I'm not sure if this is going to come across on the camera, but this is actually a 555 timer chip. We also have a few resistors. There's a pair here and another set here. Let's see, are these the same or not? So actually these aren't the same. These look like they will be 10K and 1K resistors. We also have some LEDs and these will go around the outside of the PCB here. And finally, we have a capacitor. We do have an instruction leaflet here, which includes all the parts and it also shows the schematic as well. And so we can see our 10K resistors are going to go here, along with the capacitor to set the frequency. And then we have a chain of our LEDs off on the other side with their independent 1K resistors. The 555 here is in the center of the diagram. This actually is a double-sided PCB. So let's turn on the soldering iron and get started. First up, I'm going to install the IC in the center here because it's surface mount and it is indeed going to be in the center. So we'll get that out of the way and then we can solder all of the components that are necessary around it. Now, this time I'm using my regular chunky tip on the soldering iron, so we'll see how I get on with that. So I'm just going to tin one of the pads and then we'll carefully move the chip into place. Also gonna apply a little extra flux because we're going to reflow this pad. And it's important that we get our chip around the right way. So you can see there is a line on the chip here, and that's going to indicate the pin one marking side. Okay, so we have the chip reasonably well aligned here. So I'm just gonna solder on all the other pins and then we can touch up that one if necessary. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with that. Maybe it could have been a bit neater if I'd used a finer tip, but it seems to have done the job. That looks like that's connected just fine. So next up, let's do our resistors. And we can see we have some here, and that's a brown, black, black, red with a brown tolerance band. And these will be our two 10K resistors. These go in positions R1 and R2. And we can see R1 is just here and R2 is just here. Of course, if we're unsure, we can always check the values with a multimeter. So here I'm going to set my one to the 20K range because we need something that is above the range we're expecting. And then we can pop a single resistor across the probes. And here we go, we're getting 9.85. So again, those are going in R1 and R2. Okay, and that means we can put all of our other resistors in the other positions here. Those should be 1K, so let's double check that with the multimeter as well. So this time we can put it on the 2000 range, and we want to hold just a single one of these resistors across the probes, and here we're seeing, well, precisely 1000. That's pretty damn good. And if we want to do it by color band, that's not a problem. We can see brown, black, black, brown. So that's one, zero, zero with one additional zero.
Okay, this looks good so far. Next I'm going to put in the capacitor here. So the capacitor is polarized, so it's important that we put the negative end on the negative side and the positive end on the positive side. So you can see here this can is marked negative, and that's also the shorter lead. And the positive side is the longer lead, and it's actually marked with a tiny little plus sign on the PCB. The shaded area is the negative, so the capacitor goes in this way around. I was thinking about laying this capacitor down. In the original diagrams, it is shown standing up. If these pads were the other way around, horizontal rather than vertical, then I would fold it over. But actually, as these aren't the right way around to fold them, I'm actually going to just leave it upright and it will just stick out the front as it does in the initial diagrams. So you'll notice there that it is important that we do all of the resistors and the capacitors first, because otherwise, if we'd soldered on this piece here, the battery holder, we wouldn't be able to get to any of these connection points. So now I think it's time for us to do the LEDs, and they're just going to go in an alternating pattern all the way around. So again, in the initial diagram, it starts with green at the top, and that's what I'm going to follow here. Just like capacitors, our LEDs are polarized, and again, the longer leg is the positive side, and the slightly flattened side of the LED is the negative side, and that's also the shorter leg. But we can also double check with a battery like this one, this is a CR2032, and as you can see, the longer leg is on the positive side of the battery. Hopefully you can see the positive symbol just there. And the shorter leg is on the negative side, and that's illuminating the LED. Now, on the board here, it doesn't look as though that's actually marked, which might be slightly problematic. But what we can do is we can go ahead and make sure we have this connected the right way by using the multimeter. So we know that this positive side here will go upright in the battery holder, like so. That means our bottom terminal here is negative, and that is our negative terminal just here. So we now know this pin position here is negative on our board, and we can see how that's connected up. So multimeter to the rescue again, and what I'm going to do is pop this down into continuity diode test mode. If I hold these probes together, we get a beep, which is good, and that means we have a connection. And so as we said, it's this position here that is the negative side. And so we want to see which of the LED terminals are going towards the negative. So this isn't the same for all of the LED positions. So what we can do here is we can see that some of these have a negative connection. There we go. And it's every alternate LED. And we can consult our diagram here. And we can also see then that the positive side of the other ones should all be connected to the VCC rail. And so we know the other pin is VCC, um, and that's the positive side of the battery. So let's go and check that one as well. So it seems that all of our LEDs should have the positive on the outside and the negative on the inside. Always worth double checking. Again, as a reminder, long leg positive, short leg negative, and of course that's true for our red LEDs as well. Okay. And the last thing for us to attach is the battery holder, which we've already investigated, but it goes on the back here. And as you can see, the sticky out bit here goes to this section here. Make sure you get it around the right way, because of course the polarity does matter for those LEDs, and of course the chip as well, for that matter. Okay, so this kit does indeed use a CR2032, so let's pop it in and see if it works. Ah, oh, so there we go. It's flashing a little bit dimly on the red ones. But it is working. I think they're all working. What I'm going to do is just go grab a fresher battery and see if that makes it a bit brighter. Okay, here's a fresh brand new battery, so let's try this one out for size. Oh, and there we go, much brighter. I think this is going to look absolutely fabulous on my Christmas tree this year. So there you go, I think this is a really nice little Christmas kit. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'll provide a link to the listing on AliExpress from which I purchased this particular version, but I'm sure you can come across it from other sources if you prefer. But for now, I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.